In this video, we will run through the new features of IGAS 7.4. We will start off by opening data from a SQLite database. So this option can be found from the file ribbon under the new option for SQLite. Navigate to a SQLite database file and click to open. This will take you to this dialog, which will let you select from which table that you want to bring into IGAS. You will then alias the columns accordingly using the column properties dialog. You can choose to save this imported SQLite database as an IGAS file. But for now, let's open the data view where we have added a new feature in IGAS 7.4 to edit data cells. If we now click on this icon on the right hand side toolbar of the data view, we can toggle edit mode where we can make changes to the data directly by editing the cell values. You can see as I do this, there's a red border that appears around the window to indicate that edit mode is now activated. I want to use this opportunity to edit uh, one of my metadata columns, in this case, my alteration classification column. So I can edit the data in the cell view. So this cell in particular has high zinc and arsenic corresponding to this row. And you can also choose to edit the content, not just uh, for a text column, but you can also choose to edit the content of a numeric column in IGAS. But bear in mind how this will affect the results in any derived columns, like calculation results. Now I want to show you how we can create a custom user variable groups. This is a feature that has been requested a number of times before by our users, and it's really useful when you have a number of elements that you want to save as a favorite group. So this function can be found in the select variables dialog. So say if I want to create a group for certain commodity elements for copper gold exploration, so I want to select just copper, gold, and molly in this instance. I'm just going to select these three elements. And I can click on this button in the select variables dialog to create my own group. And as I do that, it will be displayed under the user drop-down list. And I can use the same workflow to create a copy of a provided variable group. In this instance, a porphyry copper gold group. And I can use this to edit the list of elements uh, to better feed my need. So this is not a workflow that you can use using this new tool. So please note that this function only works on alias columns. The next feature I want to look at is on the principal components analysis tools. So we've made a number of changes here, including the ability to calculate more than 12 uh, principal components columns. But in the results window, in the report, we have a new tab here called eigenvector plots. So this is basically a visual representation of the eigenvectors table and you can use this uh, to visualize your eigenvector values. A new feature that we've added to the 2D biplot is the ability to display point density grid and also the ability to display mineral and rock nodes. So we can now plot mineral compositions if you're using alias columns like, like this one as the input for the PCA. On the 3D biplot, we've added a few number changes as well. So in the 3D by plot, it is not possible. So if you use the flash highlighter tool, if you highlight from a number of data points, you can now rotate your view if you have some data selected in the 3D by plot. If you hold down your Alt key while you, wrote, while you have the selected data points active, you can choose to rotate your view. This function is also found on 3D variable plot. So your uh, standard 3D spin plot and you can also do this in 3D map view as well. The next thing I want to show is on the changes that we have made to the downhole plots in I guess. But before we do that, I want to show a new feature on how we can bring in a batch of files containing the same structure um, at the same time. So this is useful, especially if you are bringing in a batch of CSV files from lab essay results, for example. The batch importer can be found from the file ribbon where you can choose to open uh, these batches of files. So you can see here that it's in alphanumeric order. So it will choose to bring in the rows in the file in alphanumeric order. So in this case, the rows will be ordered from the first file and then to the second file and third file in that list. So you can see in the column of this dialog here that this file has a number of major elements, some in oxide, some in weight percent. So just keep that in mind for now and we will get to this in a bit shortly. So before we move on, I want to show this new tool in IGAS that allows you to easily sum uh, the major elements in this file as oxides. So as some of these elements are not in oxide form, this tool, which can be accessed from the calculation ribbon, and it will run on a select variables dialog as with any quick calc that we have in IGAS. 
So if you see the elements that I've selected, some are in weight percent, some are in oxide. So what it will do when I run this tool, so I'm just gonna click OK and then go to the calculation ribbon and I go to the sum button and I click on sum selected alias variables as oxide. What it will do is it, it will sum all of these elements in oxide form and it will try to calculate the remainder and it will output them as new columns. So as I click calculate all in this dialog, it will calculate some oxides and missing oxides as two new columns, which we can see here. After I bring up the data view, you go to the end and it will bring up uh, the sum oxides and uh, the missing oxides as two new columns. So there's another option here. So if you go back to the calculation menu and I select from a whole bunch of these elements again, there's an op another option uh, if, if your data is all in oxide percent this option will let you sum all the selected alias variables just as percent. And there's another option to recalculate selected elements in oxide based on 100% uh, weight sum. So assuming that all of them add up to 100% and it will uh, recalculate the individual columns as such. So now let's look at the changes that we made to the downhole plot tool. So we've standardized the tools across uh, downhole plot, uh, line plot tool, uh, wavelet tessellation found from the wavelet um, button in the analysis ribbon and also in recurrence plot as well. So what this does is it improves the consistency between these tools and it streamlines your workflow, especially especially if you use these tools uh, regularly. It also does the same thing in the glinking tool in the XY plot as well. As a side note, before we look at our next feature, I want to point out that in IGA 7.4, we have included a new demonstration file for results from Osiris. So this file contains examples of spectral mineralogy results, so a typical gas file that's exported from the Osiris desktop application, which can be plotted up on Osiris specific diagrams and templates. So we'll release a separate video on this workflow, so stay tuned. So the next feature I wanna show you is the merge columns tool. So the merge columns function is another uh, highly requested feature. So that allows you to combine data columns easily in IAGAS. Uh, so we've added a number of special functions to this tool, such as automatic conversion between two data columns of different unit and oxide state. So this file has silica in three different columns, and I want to basically merge SIPPM to SIO2%. So the merge columns function can be found from the data ribbon. I've selected SIO2% and SIPPM in this exact order because this tool will basically look at the unit and element oxide combination of the first column in this list and it will use this as the basis for merging the other columns. In this dialog, I have an option of creating a new column from the result of the merge, or to use the first column in this list, as I2% as the destination column. Let's leave that as create new column and click OK for now. And in the next dialog that appears, I can choose to write a new name for the merge output. The next message that appears is it will ask if I wish to convert SIPPM to oxide percent. And because it detects that the first column in this list is weight percent, it will convert SIPPM to SI2 percent. And you can see the result here in data view in a new column that's been generated. Another type of work workflow that you might try to do is if you have conflicting rows, say if you want to merge SI2 PPM to SI2 percent, there are overlapping rows as you can see here. So when our radio button is set to do not allow conflicts, we will get this error message when you run uh, OK on this dialog. So it says that four rows contain values in multiple columns. And if you click OK here and choose the second radio button instead, it will choose to use the value from the first column in this list that contains a valid entry. So you can see how this will use values from the SIO2% for the overlap. And when there are no overlap, it will just run the conversion as expected. The last feature that I want to show you is error bars. So this is something that has been requested a number of times before by our users. So this tool requires error or uncertain information for an element to be present in a separate column. So for example, in this file, I have a TIO2 underscore SD next to TIO2 percent and the same thing for each of the element that I have in this file. So you will need to have the element selected in this exact order in the select variables dialog because what we'll do next is we will plot this, these up as a scatter plot uh, containing error bars. So this is a new type of plots in IAGAS. So you will need to use the select variables dialog to engage this function. So we provide this functionality in a number of new plot types for XY plots. 
um, which are basically the same XY plot types as a normal scatter plot, just with error bars enabled. So let's open the first one in this list. So this is a normal XY plot option, except that it displays error bars right next to each data point. So it plots uh, the first column in the select variables list as the X axis with other columns as the Y axis, um, along with uh, error bars next to each data point. The pairwise option is basically the same as a pairwise scatter plot, just with error bars enabled. And you can find them in the same uh, drop down list as well under the graph ribbon in IDS. So this is a brief overview of the error bar function, which concludes our video on some of the new features and improvements found in version 7.4 of IDS. This version also contains a number of other improvements and fixes. Some of these include Scott Haley's uh, additions of new yield garn rock composition nodes, which you can find in the rock composition tool in XYPlot in IIGAS. So this also comes with a number of new classification diagrams on Kalgoorlie rocks, uh, rocks, which you can find in the provided diagrams menu. And we've also made improvements to the way we, re we report total rows and number of multivariate rows with calculation results. And we've also improved performance in Crosstab tool and we've improved the way MapGrid legends are displayed in IIGAS. So for more information, please refer to the What's New documentation in our help file or contact us if you have any questions at all. Thanks for watching and see you next time.